everybody. Welcome hey. to. Hey! <laughs> wow, that was it. Hey. Hey. hey! hey! What's up, everybody? And welcome to the Biotalk Book Club. Book Club, Book Club. Biotalk we get to- Book Club. Is yeah. that what we're talk- calling it now? I thought it was just Book Club. Dude, Why that's what you Mark said last week. Things? That's what we're calling it. Last, we- last, last week, I was, like, I was like, maybe I wasn't called Biotalk. And then now it's like, oh, and now it's a book club, and now it's Biotalk Book it's Club. It's Biotalk Book Club. That's fine. Oh, okay. That, that now, was so fail. Get- you're talking about it. We're talking about Biotalk. Yeah, and no, then we'll you call literally it the BBC. did not call it Biotalk. Totally. That's it. BBC. All right, BBC, whatever. Doesn't matter. Anyway, before we get too far into this recording, I'm Bartaran. I'm LJ. I'm Kahi. I'm Viper. I'm Takuma Nuva. Yeah, Biotech Book Club. So, it's actually cool that uh, you guys are here with us today, Takuma and Viper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This are, is really scary We are missing me. a meso, unfortunately. We, oh, well. we are meso-less. What, what unfortunately. If, what if meso, like, split apart into two, and these two are the result? Um. Uh. Okay. That would be weird. Um. That's a really that's interesting, interesting idea. Okay. Like, yeah. I would not put me and Takuma <laughs> together and like. This have is a the meso. second episode in a. This is the second episode in a row where you've said something that we were just like, uh. uh okay. <laughs> at the very start of this recording. Why, that's a shame. I aren't like all about the Mardi Gras and the no. assumptions. Mardi Gras. We're like about the. Uh, not all about that Mardi Gras soup. life. Sorry, son of a gun. So, if you're just joining in and tuning into this show, we are basically going to be going through the book, the recent Bionicle book, Island of a Lost Mask. Um, last week, we talked about Chapter 1. This week, we're going to be talking about Chapter 2, yep. uh, Quest for the Golden Mask, um, where we left off. Nilku and Bingzak met um, Toatu, fought some skull spiders. That was bas- basically it. The Toa fell down to the island. We got a bit of exposition about that. Now, we are on Chapter 2. Yeah. So, going straight into it, we start this chapter off with Isator and Kopaka, and they're kind of just walking around talking about skull spiders and doing it stuff. It starts and then with they- a bold lettering and then italic at the end, I don't remember anything. You d- No, it's actually, you don't remember anything? Yeah. Um, but anyway, um... Isator reminds Kopak about the pro- the prophecy of heroes and everything, and how they have to find the golden mask. And then a bunch of skull spiders start attacking, which is pretty uh, standard fare for this book. It seems skull spiders <laughs> seem to be all over the yeah. place. Just a little. Um, you can definitely tell there's there's some problem going on with the skull spiders. <laughs> yeah, the place seems to be really overrun Any by pest them. Pest control. It's like it's these like England right now. The Toa. That's like. That's why they need the Toa. The Toa and the pest control. That's all they are. <laughs> don't don't these spiders ever take like a, a day off to like, you know, like a work day? No, no they can't what? stop. Won't stop. Don't have something stop. tells me that the skull spiders do not have a Sabbath. So no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Lord of Skull Spiders not say remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy <laughs> unto me. You, like you shall have no other Lord of the Skull Spiders above me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> back to Biotalk. Oh, wait. Bionicle Book Club. Yeah, back Never to mind. Bionicle, Which one? Guys. I don't know. Um, Kopaka does some cool maneuvers, takes out some skull spiders. Isator is all like, man, you're a really cool warrior, dude. And Kopaka's like, yeah, I know, man. Yeah, so cool. Um, <laughs> kind of like pretty much Solik every hero. Was. Yeah, basically. You're yeah. cool. Um, and then, uh, Isator mentions the other regions of Okoto. Kopaka is like, oh, one for each Toa. Isator is like, yeah. Um, ask him about the other Toa. Kopaka doesn't remember any of the names. He doesn't remember Tahu, Gali, or anyone else, which is, you know, kind of obvious. Standard fair. Standard fair. Like yeah. I said, he doesn't remember um, anything. Now, this next part, though. This, uh, if you watched our, our part one episode, you already heard us complain about how this book does some really weird things where it just kind of shoehorns in exposition yeah. at random points that don't really fit. I wanted to talk so much about that during the first episode. Because, yeah. <laughs> like, so he asked him about the other Toa, and then right after that, it's Isator pointed to Kopaka's shield. According to the legend, your frost shield is composed of two pieces. Separate the pieces, attach them to your feet, and they become avalanche skis. Oh. Is this really one now? Separately. Is, is this really <laughs> yeah, yeah, not sold separately? Each sold separately. 
<laughs> just like, oh yeah, by the way, you've got these awesome cool weapons that can split apart and attach to your feet. Fire toys, fire toys, fire toys. <laughs> fire. I, is this really the prophecy though? Did it go, when times are dark, we'll get Kopaka's frost shield to split apart in the two pieces. <laughs> right? That's, that's the thing that always gets me. Like, I get the prophecy says that heroes will come, but that's a pretty specific prophecy. Right, yeah. like that's really specific. We need yeah. to wear Whoever's size doing 12 fortune boots telling, you're doing a good job. For peanut butter sandwiches. Yeah, like united, but not one like Pohatu Stormerangs. <laughs> Gosh. Um, I will it, say, there is something interesting beforehand, uh, a bit earlier on, when the book is mentioning uh, how they're walking from where the comet had smashed, and it says that there are three village lengths from where Kopaka's comet had smashed, <laughs> which I felt is an interesting metric to measure length by. Like, <laughs> a village. Is that universal? Yeah, a village. A village link. A village yeah, link? I guess that is interesting. That kind of makes the implication well, I mean, that all the villages yards. are the same size. I guess so. Yeah, but a yard is not like... That's not like saying, oh, we're three cities lengths away. I, the better thing like is a, like a city isn't... Yeah, like a city isn't the same size. Right. So like this... Yeah. The implication that this makes is that the villages... Oh my gosh. <laughs> city, okay, well, yard, they're both like obscure your joke masses was stupid. of land. Your joke was dumb. Yeah. So is your no face. One laughed. Right, oh. thank you. Um, your joke was done, no one laughed. Anyway, but this kind of, it makes a weird implication that the, all the villages are like the same size, otherwise that metric doesn't really make any sense. I mean, this is just, yeah, maybe that's all just kind of random. It's just maybe weird. Maybe the ice villages are the same. Use. Wait, what? Oh, I guess, yeah, actually, no, that's a fair point. Like, what if all the ice villages are the same? Yeah, like, they may be different sizes in different places, but at least for ice, they're all built by the but same architect and so on and so forth. <laughs> Hmm. I mean, yeah, that, that that is interesting. We do know there's diff multiple villages in different regions. Mm -hmm. we, we're still not really sure how large the regions are, but I guess it's safe to assume that Okoto is a pretty big yeah, place. Yeah, do, do, do we yeah. get to mention, like, outside information? Because I do have some in that regard. Uh, outside of the book? Uh, yeah. Or yeah. outside of the chapter? Outside of the book. Uh, sure, what do, you, what do you mean? Uh, there was an interview, a fan interview conducted very recently with writer Winham, the guy who wrote this book. Author of this book. Yeah. And he was asked how big Okoto was, and the general consensus was it's huge. It would take one villager weeks to get across the island. Oh, so it's it's kind of like, uh, sort of like Europe, like it's like a massive. And then like the the separate areas are kind of like different countries of their own almost. It's like I that big. I was gonna say it's kind of like Matanui, but yeah, that works too. Yeah, yeah I, I was mean, just trying to put it in a like realistic perspective, like out of. Pure curiosity, how long did it take you to get across the U.S. from walking? Walking? Yeah. Pretty long. I mean, I'm like, not sure. I it just takes curious. a day to drive. It takes, like, 40 yeah. hours for me to drive from where I am and the Midwest yeah, to I, Arizona. I drove... According to Google, it depends where you start and your pace. I yeah. was able to walk across in about six and a half months of actual walking time. <laughs> six and a half <laughs> months. <laughs> <laughs> That's like medieval. Imagine like in medieval times when there was only like horseback. It must have taken ages. Yeah, but, but the I horses mean, a lot imagine. faster than we are. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But, but no, no, normal peasants still couldn't took a afford lot. horses usually. For America, the walk. greatest like example would probably be the Oregon Trail. Yeah, uh, that's ah, that's the largest people have gone across the nation, uh, like in mass amounts using uh, like horses and the wagon and stuff, and that took them several months at least. Almost a year, or sometimes over a year. Sometimes Man. what would happen is that they would leave as a group and come to Oregon as a completely different group. So many people would die along the way. So people <laughs> could like die on the trip. <laughs> so, so we said a day, LJ. Is that how big a Koto is? I, I didn't. I didn't say a day. I said it'd take weeks. Weeks for weeks. someone to get across yeah, the weeks. island. Weeks. So uh, for clearly, for like not Georgia. really as big as the U.S. But it's pretty big. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd argue um, it's around the size of Mount Nui, which we do have metrics for, but I don't remember them off the top of my head. Is there like <laughs> a? I was just trying. I was just trying to look them up, and I'm not seeing them. Is there like a real world comparison to Mount Nui uh, as far as size goes? Yes, actually. Yeah, I was trying to think Denmark. Denmark. There is. It's it's actually been compared to Denmark in a uh, concept ah. piece by uh, what's his name? Oh wait, uh, the island uh, measured. 357 kilo or 303 miles in length and 178 kilo or 151 miles wide. Oh, that went right over my head. So, um... Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that's a it's roughly 300 by 150. 
Miles. 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 Yeah, but how big is that, like, compared to something we know? Is that about yeah, the size? Yeah, I'm, 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 like, trying to visualize how big that is. Okay, well, let's, let's think about it. If it's 300 miles, if you're going 60 miles an hour, that's that means, not very uh, that's, Yeah, that's <laughs> And you throw five, a cheesecake out the window, how hours. slow is it going to take you to get there? So if you go 60 miles an hour, then 300 miles, that's five hours, right? So it's a five-hour trip. So, like, it's about the size of, like, Illinois, I guess. Yeah, that's like... For me, like, from where I am, yeah. down in the south, I you can get to Chicago You said it would take, Chicago like, weeks six. to get across Okoto? By walking. Uh, yeah, by walking. I, I'm, I'm so, thinking car ride, but, like, so about the, the size average, of, like, Illinois. I mean, if we assume the or, same as average human walking speed, which is about 3.1 miles per hour, <laughs> times 24 hours a day, times, say, two weeks, that's a... Uh, Thousand something. I forgot what my measure uh, my units were. Oh, so many numbers. But see, no, uh, about a thousand miles. Stay in school, kids. We don't know. Stay in school. We don't know. Yeah, we don't uh, know how long the villager can maths. walk, and we don't know how many weeks it takes him to walk. We know Matanui is about the size of a general U.S. state, like Illinois, Indiana, California, maybe. No, California's too big. I'm it, getting yeah, the rock. California is way bigger than Illinois. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, I know um, it's bigger than Illinois, but Illinois isn't that big, is it? It's not that big. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that if you took a car and you drove from one end of Mata Nui to another, it would be five hour. It would be a five hour drive. You're going sixty miles an hour, and yeah, for me to get to Chicago not, is six hours. So roughly it's about speaking, uh, that's that's Illinois. not very big because I've just scaled like how long it takes to get to the bottom of like England from Scotland, and it's six hours by car. So right. That's literally like exactly. the scale of. Right. Best I can say, it seems that Okoto is around three times larger than the island of Matanui. What? How did you get that metric? <laughs> Rate and time, and distance, it's yeah. basic uh, math. Yeah, but that that what, like what equation was, no, 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 it's that's not basic math. Um, assuming you... that assuming that the uh, the Okotians or whatever we're calling them okay. have the same average walking speed as a human being. Right. Assuming they non-stop walked for two weeks <laughs> and ignoring things See, exactly. like terrain, so you, uh, that's a lot. Uh, uh, we're doing a lot, a lot of guesstimating. Yeah, oh, that's a lot of guesswork, and also it's remember, a lot of guesstimating. But it's the at least Okoto three times has as big a as lot of mountains, tell. mountain ridges. So did Matanui. So did Matanui. But Mount, Matanui has one giant thing during the middle. Okoto has a lot of mountains. Yeah, Okoto they have like, one kind giant. of has I, I, like, I don't feel like, like splitting off the different. I mean, regions. like it took several months. It's to get three from times one side. larger or more. No, it's. I think it's smaller than three times larger than Matanui. I think it's kind of ridiculous. Oh metric, my head! What Granted, there are several villages within you know the regions, but even still, Matanui was kind of like. Sparsely, uh, sparsely populated. So, I feel like it's about. I would say it's about the same size as modern Nui. Maybe a little larger, but not three times as large. It's a little ridiculous. Well, when you're talking about like villages, you would assume that it's very separate, separated. So you would think that the population would be more sparse than something All right. that would. So right, but not. Three I, times I, as it sparse. just occurred to me. There's actually a really easy way to to figure this out. Because we know that it took at least a couple weeks for the Toa to get to their masks from their landing site, which was in some vicinity to a village. And we have several different maps illustrating where the masks are. And we can kind of guess you know where certain villages may or may not be. How do you know it took them several weeks to get there? It's been quoted in the animations, I believe. Yeah, I think it was said in the animations. Um, did they? Or I, I'd have like so. I, we, I have to see how it is in the book. But. Well, keep in mind that the animations are also didn't come from Ryder Windham, so they might there might be some conflicting uh, statistics True, here. Yeah. Some conflicting camp. I stand by my estimate. I mean, you might be right. I'm just saying that like I, I, I was feel getting like three estimate. times larger for walking nonstop. If they're taking breaks, or would that make it smaller? If they were taking breaks, it would make it smaller. I it Way would. Smaller. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If, so. we're, if we're going nonstop, then yeah, it would probably be bigger. Yeah. But, I right. mean, like, I would assume that he meant nonstop, though. I and don't think he was really like, factoring in breaks when he said, oh, it, it would take you a week to get across this island. 
should see. I, I think so. If I say, hey, it would take you like, you know, at it least really seven weeks to get across the U.S., I'm assuming well, you're I mean, going to take a break. Yeah, but yeah. Not, no one's actually, this is it, completely hypothetical, though. No one's going to ask that question and say, like, um, how long would it take to get across there while also factoring in, oh, yeah, this person's actually going to go out and do this. So you might take breaks. Well, I you would so. just assume that people will take breaks. Right. So well, you would just no, cut yeah. it out. So you would just. Yeah, you would. Well, yeah, you would cut it out because it's That's not relevant information. Do. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm saying that when he says a villager could make it, a villager could walk. If he's walking, he can make it to from. It would take him several weeks to get from one end of the island to another. What he's assuming is that the villager is making that journey. Oh, okay. Okay. Wait. So was that the actual quote? Well, not could. Here, walk. I'll go find. I'll go dig up the quote. It's, uh, very. I think recent. we're putting way too much thought in it for yeah, an we're answer way too for a question. Like... We're, not, we're not going to get an actual answer for this. So I am in vote. Like... I am in favor of just moving well, on. Well, I mean, I don't want to just drop the conversation, so I do want to at least hear the actual quote. Quote. Yeah, all right. Well, we can hear the actual. But quote. um, I guess while you're pulling that up, we can go ahead and move on, if we mm-hmm. want to. So um, I, I yeah. don't even remember where where we were at. <laughs> uh, something about each set sold separately. Yeah. Okay. So each set sold separately. Each um, sold separately. Kabaka and, Kabaka and Isator shield. fight off some skull spiders. And he's like, "You're a skilled warrior." They don't remember any of the other Toa. Um, they he does the whole uh. Do t- p- bad. Make your shield into a surfboard thing, and then um, Isator says we have to hurry before the, the skull spiders get here. And Kapok is like, I don't see any skull spiders. Uh, literally, as he says and that, then, yeah, as he as, as he says that, he's like. Kopaka tilted his head slightly and was surprised and the dark specks suddenly became larger. He saw hundreds of skull spiders all marching fast toward his position. He shoved Isator behind him before he shifted his grip on his own weapons. There's no time to escape. Stay behind me. But, in actuality, the Skull Spiders are like... Uh, he, 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 he turned on his, his, his zoomy vision. That's what happened. He, he saw, yeah. he saw sco- yeah, telescopic, telescopic vision. Saw. Which is then explained yeah. in another very, very product placement sounding paragraph. <laughs> um, <laughs> which is strange, because that doesn't have like any actual like toy function or anything. Is there any anything. G1 true, references, yeah. guys? Um, Where is it? But, um, the important part of this scene, though, is that um, while it did kind of have the whole product placement as far as like the, the skis and like the zoomy vision um what the purpose of this seg- segment was in this chapter was to display um Kapaka's <laughs> sense of heroism because despite the skull spiders being like miles away Kapaka instinctively um moved Isator behind him as he saw the skull spiders coming at him and he was prepared to fight um which is kind of a big deal since Kapaka lost all of his memories so I guess so yeah sure Brave um, move. He also put his skis on backwards. So. <laughs> it's like, man, what a hero! Kahi, I'm trying. Everything wrong with uh, I learned the Bionicle books in ten minutes, at least. <laughs> I'm, I'm just should, saying. Uh, I'm just saying. Sure, he's protective, but he's uh, uh, this. All right, well, way to undermine uh, all the awesome work that uh, that writer Windham did to uh, to give this character some character. Yeah, thanks, Kahi. Thanks, Kahi. Listen, You're such a such a great writer. Wrote and this a, part of this thing too. All right, he chose person. to put, include this. He chose to include this paragraph in the uh, in the book. So. All right, whatever. Anyway, so they they get on their skis. I accidentally knocked my mic over. You okay. I accidentally knocked my mic over. Um, they get on their skis and they start going down the mountain and almost crash. But actually, no. Isator jumps off, and Kopaka does actually crash into an um, icy mountain thing. Because Kopaka is, you know, he didn't slip, guys. He didn't slip. He didn't slip, but he face planted into a mountain. Can't confirm. Can't can confirm Kopaka didn't slip in this chapter. <laughs> Heresy. Um, then we get some more exposition on the island um, in the region of ice and the dagger like icicles and all the cities. So, this is interesting, actually, because. I don't know, like, the geography of this island of Okoto, but they're talking about um, this ancient city, but I don't think they're referring to the ancient city. No, it says later on, he's like, like all the great cities in the right. other regions of Okoto. So, so yeah. there's, there's other, other great, great like, cities like, that are like apparently no ancient and abandoned. Right. Which is really, yeah, no, really I, I think- intriguing. I and think it leads to the right. question: like, Where is the yeah. main city then? I would assume the, the main city is then? the mas- the mask or the city of the mask makers. So, um, yeah. But it's just like so. This is the first time we've heard about other cities, though. Like we know there are villages and everything, but we haven't heard about other ancient cities that were abandoned either. And there's like tombs and everything in the region specific. Because um, before 
I thought the assumption was that everybody lived in the ancient city of the mask makers before the great ca- cataclysm, and then they all yeah, there was like a massive city right, of and just then they all everyone. separated and went to regions. But this yeah. makes the implication that there were regions ahead of that, where they all lived. Well, not regions per se, but other cities outside of just the ancient city. Yeah, which is kind of interesting. I don't know, like what that what right. this implies or entails, but um. Well, the thing that's interesting to me is that he says like all of the other great cities, it's a tomb now. You know, it's now an ancient tomb for everybody. And then when Kilpaka asks what happens, he's like, "Oh, there's an army." He replies, "No, it's just the battle between the mask makers," which means that the mask makers must have battled in every single city. No, 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 no. That, that I, is I, I don't know if that's what it means. Uh, I believe they had a battle in like the sandy he said, right, desert listen, area. Kilpaka says, "Dead warring armies destroyed the cities. Cities, plural." Right. And Isator says, no, not armies, but just a clash between I'm, just but two But I'm brothers. assuming what, he's, what, yeah, the, what the actual makers. implication is, not that they were battling it out through all these cities, but just that m- m- when the moment came and Akimu knocked the mask off Makuta's face, that the uh, the explosion affected all these cities as well. Because, uh, not, like, keep in mind, not only did it ca- create the crater, but it also was what formed all the regions in Okoto. It threw the whole island out of whack. Mm. So um, I guess that it's is. It's likely fair. that there, that there, event was what caused all these cities to go into ruin and have to be abandoned. There's actually a solidified answer oh. later on in this chapter when Kivoda is explaining things to Galley. Oh, okay. It's not when the mask got knocked off. It's when he put the mask on. It says here, "What happened next?" When Makuta put on the mask, it took control of him, and the entire island began to shake and crumble. Akimi realized what Makuta had done, and he managed to knock the mask off from his brother's face. This produced an explosion of cataclysmic proportions. Y- and- yeah, but then it says cities crumbled, and a great crater was left at the site of the explosion. Huh. <laughs> So, basically, what you just said was that, yes, it was the mask being knocked off that caused the cities to... All right, well, uh, that's it for okay. me. I'm going to go now and uh, fall into a hole. Bye. <laughs> well, 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 to be fair, it could it could have been before and after. It, it was like it a, com- it was a combination. Uh, it, it says it, after. It does it sa- say it after. It says the entire island began to shake and crumble when he put it on. Right. So, I mean... Akimo, re- the crater itself was left when it was knocked off. But the, it does... But it, but it the says the, the cities didn't crumble until after the, the explosion. Right. So, like, there's an earthquake around, and then when, Maku- like, Akimu knocks um, the mask out of Ak- Makuta's face, there's, like, an explosion yeah. that actually yeah. ruptures the entire island. Yeah, no, no, Var's right. But, I mean, Var's right. with that... S- Maybe the tremors beforehand just weakened yeah, like, everything to the point where the explosion finally... With, the, with that said, wow. it's, it's... I mean, it, it's not, like, improbable that these... Uh, when the earth shook when he put on the mask, that it didn't cause any damage. I'm sure it caused damage, otherwise it wouldn't have been that big of a deal, right? Yeah. So... <laughs> it's what like, are you talking it's about? Like, it just it made Akimu want to detach the mask from him even more because he was causing chaos, right. right? Like I'm assuming there was a reason that he needed to get the mask off. So I'm assuming that yeah. the mask was causing destruction. So likely, um, the entire event was what caused the cities to crumble and become abandoned or yeah. ruined. Um, but yeah, I don't think it was because they were fighting throughout the cities. Yeah, fair no. enough. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. Um, that. Although that would be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, there's like, like a civil war. Non- there's like a civil war between like they, them. They go through in a circle. Like how long does it take two brothers to war their way across the island? <laughs> I don't know. How long does it take to lick to the center of a Tootsie Pop? I actually counted once. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, my I'm tongue was so here. sore. Oh my well, gosh. Why I don't want to get that in here. Yeah. <laughs> Fascinating as that is. Because people find this entertaining. Let's move on. And, uh, oh my god! But <laughs> not gonna lie, it's entertaining, but it concerns me. It does concern me too. But still, though, other cities, big revelation, right? That we can all like unanimously agree. That's, that's a big that's thing. Pretty, because yeah. uh, I, I mean, I kind of assumed there were. Certain did certain you areas? that uh, there are not yeah. other cities? Why? How did? How did? How maybe did you I, maybe I didn't that? think too much about the distinction between I'm, I'm cities just, and villages. I'm trying villages. to be messed so well. He's not here. And Aldrin, no one is even work. listening to you right now. Yeah, your your voice is so muffled. We, we're that oh, we're trying to hear Takuma, and you're just talking in the background with some weird joke that no one's paying attention to. <laughs> um, but just, well, I mean, like, how could you assume that there are other cities though? Because wh- from what we have been, what I was saying when I was so rudely interrupted, Elder. was <laughs> that I guess I didn't think too much about differentiating between a city versus a village. But the villages didn't exist prior to the cataclysm. 
They no. didn't. I always assumed no. that there were that there yes. was more than just the ancient city. Um, it kind of reminds me of like. I mean, that story. it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to me, anyways, unless like this was a very early on primitive civilization. Why would they all huddle together in one place instead of spreading out? Uh, well, maybe like the cities became like I off mean, limits. Listen, like, we we were like Generation up. One had Mata Nui. That's how Mata Nui worked. They were all in one place instead of spreading out. So what? I mean, in Mata Nui, all the villages are just one village. Uh, they didn't spread out. There are Takoro, Gakoro, no. Onukoro. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm saying that like there's multiple villages within each region. I'm saying for the entire fire region, there's only one fire well, city. Well, but we're also under the assumption that oh, well, um, I think the region there. The, yes, the reason there are multiple villages saying, now is because there's a larger population. Mata Nui wasn't that big. As I was well, saying, actually, no, because we just it established that it wasn't terrible me, in size, so uh, I don't know. Right. It would make more sense to me if it was early on <clears throat> in civilization, but since we're assuming it isn't with the Kodo, at least I am, that would give credence to the fact that they spread out. Matanui, they didn't spread out so much because this was still a very new thing happening. I mean, sure, a, th- a millennium is a long time, but... Uh, oh, hey, it's a pretty long time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, a thousand so those years characters, ago, not really. A thousand years ago, it was the year one thousand fifteen. <laughs> okay, so the Middle Ages had barely We're not begun. Not Matoran, though. Yeah, I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying the Middle Ages had barely begun, and now we talk to each other over the air, <laughs> so we can we can see each other and talk to each other through the air. Yeah, I'm and then saying, you look at what they accomplished years. on Matanui, and they were still using canoes and shells and that stuff like that. That is also quite true. So, I mean, like, maybe these yes, people Yes, they were there for a really smart. long time, but their technology didn't exactly advance as fast as we do ours. Yeah, but they could still build huts outside terms. the villages. They knew how to build huts. I don't know. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm Bottom have... line is, I had already assumed I mean, that they ideas. were spread out over the island to some extent or another. Because it wouldn't have made sense for me that they were all just jumbled into one city. I guess. Sure. That was that was just already what was going on in my head. Regardless, the, the initial point I was trying to make was that <laughs> it's really cool we have other cities because it means there's probably other... No, it oh, yeah, it's so cool. It's, it's nice cool. to have yeah. it exact... Uh-huh. It's nice to have it pointed out, even if... It, even if I wanted to already say that it means there's still culture that we haven't gotten to discover yet and that we might have, like, delve into in future, like, future years. That yes, yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm with you. Yeah. Now, I mean, if you could define culture, it's, I hate oh, no. every okay. single one of you people. <laughs> I am so annoyed. It's this thing that happens. Why, when you LJ? Make Why? Why do you do this? Anyway, moving on. So, <laughs> so now we, we switch perspectives from uh, Kopaka and. Um, Isator to Kavoda and Gali. And Gali. the chapter does a pretty cool thing where it goes from the perspectives of different Toa, but it kind of like continues on. Yeah, like continues the conversation yeah. from the past Toa into the, the next Toa. It's like they're all having the same kind of event happening at the same time. All at once. Yeah. yeah. They're all having the same discussion. All, yeah. yeah, the same discussion, which is kind of cool. Which is good because you can keep kind of keep feeding the reader this information it's like while you, not you boring tell, them with just you can the tell same the reader two this characters. is all happening. But you don't have to tell it individually, so it's not laborious and repetitive. Yes. <laughs> um, but, um, yes, so we continue on to Kibota and um, Gali, and this chapter kind of starts off with, like, the exposition that we've already gotten before. Um, Gali asks about the mask makers, Kibota answers, you know, they were brothers, they fought over um, the mask of ultimate power, mask of ultimate power caused the destruction across the island, formed the regions of Okoto, and, um, you know, destroyed the cities. Um. Then Tahu. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't. Not <laughs> not really anything like... else happens during Golly's section. Like they they swim around in the ocean. Golly almost kills some fish. Yeah. <laughs> watch out! Watch out for those fish. Um, and the brothers provided all the islanders with many masks that we haven't seen yet. Um, yeah. yeah. It's just, I don't know. Yeah, nothing really happens. Uh, Golly cur- nearly kills some fish, and there's some lava in the water. And that bridges on the, to uh, Tahu and Narmoto. Um, and my book is frozen. I mean, maybe oh, no. there's something to be said for uh, when Golly asks why the protectors don't just get the masks themselves. Uh, yeah, that is a good point. Um, 
that was explained. Yeah. Uh, it's because the masks were made specifically for the Toa, right? It's like they're so... For the strongest, for you and the other yeah, Toa. Yeah, for the strongest. So, I feel like there could be some implications there, like... Well, I think I, mean, it I guess it was already a prophecy. Yeah, it was I feel like the implication is that they if you that wear way. a mask that's stronger than so, you are, it takes control of like what happened to Makuta. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, like okay, that makes Makuta. sense. Yeah, but possibly one of the Toa might be strong enough to wear the mask of ultimate power, or somebody out there could or be strong enough they, to wear like, that. Maybe they like merge together. To maybe it's a time. Kimu. Yeah. Takanuba master. Taka master of Time. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, so that that's actually a really well, interesting that theory. That makes a lot of sense. So it's Go like, yeah, it. if... But it, it also brings up the question one... of, does the, do the masks actually have, like, a living soul or being within them when they're created? I, I, or is know, it just... That's true. That's true. I don't I don't know. Like, when this is a took, con- took Is it like the Anika where it has, like, its own mentality to it? I kind of just assume that it just makes them kind of go crazy. I don't think it actually yeah, takes yeah. control yeah. Like, of them physically. Um, right. I, that would be weird if it was. Like, uh, you're, you're right, overwhelmed. Yeah. Because, like, if that was the case, it. the Makuta wouldn't be evil right now. He got the mask knocked off of him. If if it was the mask mm-hmm. controlling him, getting the mask separated from him would likely, you know, m- turn him back to his normal self. Unless we're going with, like, a Ninjago Garmadon tale. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Makuta could have turned evil, like, beforehand, and that's why he but made the mask. I don't well, think he, he was evil. Jealous. If you follow my previous evil. Day, he wasn't evil. Yeah, exactly. I mean, everyone gets I kinda, jealous. We're I'm not evil. too convinced that Makuta's the villain in this story yet either. We still have yet to like actually have a solid connection to Makuta, which is cool. We have a lot of people by the having way. hearsay. Yeah, I, I, I like I like really knowing who our enemy is yet. This is it's a lot of mystery so far, which is good. Yeah, we're back back to square one. Yeah, it's not not everything's being spoon fed to us, and this is good. And it seems like there is a lot of right. hidden details here that they're keeping that mystery, which you know, iconically was in Bionicle yeah. the first gen. Yeah. Um, kind, kind of my takeaway from it is just the fact that you know they said it was made for more powerful beings for you and the other Toa. That kind of makes me wonder, like, was that specifically part of the prophecy then? Like, how much of this was known in advance? Was it known that somebody, or even specifically Makuto, was going to do some? Shenanigans. I, I feel like I here's, here's the prophecy. For that. The prophecy says, hey, how when much you need these guys the most, beforehand. when you need these guys the most, they will. You, you can summon the Toa, who are great heroes, and they'll come down, and they will, uh, you know, they will they get will the golden mask, you. and they'll help save you of all their problems with their dual core features that can be split apart and reattached them in different ways to, you know, form <laughs> adrenaline mode. Yeah. 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 Was that an if or a when? I wish I could call if, upon a Toa if. when I'm in trouble. That would be helpful. Because remember, they the the elders come together and decide that it's time to call the Toa. So there's no when for them. It's just an if. In the same way that the original Toa were too. Like, uh, Vakama tells Takua to go and summon them. There's no... There, there's We're told there's a prophecy about the Toa. We don't actually hear that. The original prophecy of the Toa Mata? It is true. We... We never, we never hear that. Did ever? Um, we don't even know if like it was one of the Kama's visions or who gave. Well, I think we, like, well, how did yeah, the yeah, Where did that prophecy come from, LJ? Do you know? <coughs> from G one. Yeah. Like prophecy of the matter. Yeah, for the matter. No. We have that kind of just happened. We don't really, we really know. We never happened. heard of the prophecy of the matter. They were just a always a, just a fail safe so may, maybe like the order Matt Nui like laid something around when Vakama found yeah. the masks in Metro Nui but mm. I mean aside from that there's nothing that I can personally recall yeah, so it was kind of- well I mean throughout Manog they reference the prophecy they're like oh you're part of this oh, well, ancient okay, prophecy okay, te- that- technically there was an unspoken prophecy you guys remember the telescope right yes I do remember yeah. that okay see and- it was on there it was laid out in hieroglyph hi- hieroglyph <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, me- I remember seeing that. Yeah, there was yeah, like the stars and then the Toa come down and exactly. Like, That's binnacle. probably the closest we ever got to the prophecy. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, that makes no sense. That absolutely makes no sense. How did the constellations match up? They're not Mata Nui's I, constellations. I, They're out on the world. I, I can't tell you this, man. I can't tell you. <laughs> like, think about it this way. Mata Nui is shipwrecked on Aqua Magna, okay? And this is not inside... Inside, the stars were, like, his thoughts. That's how the spirit stars worked. Yeah, uh, they were apparently. his dreams. Well, I mean... Right, they're his dreams. <laughs> but 
if you go outside, if you go on the surface of Mata Nui, where the island is, how does a telescope, like, get those <laughs> images from the constellations? The only thing that Mata Nui controls is the red star. Magic. What is up with that? Do you believe in magic? This is a very intriguing point. That's a good question. <laughs> Dinosaurs. Di Dinosaurs. Yeah. The answer to everything. G2, help me not figure out Red. G1's we problems. Got, no, we never got the so, dinosaurs. Hmm. Yeah. So we're left to assume that the prophecy came from the constellations, but we have no clue how the constellation would form this prophecy. I, the, 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 it literally makes I, no sense because they built You know what? If the red star afterwards. wasn't an actual star, who's to say the I rest mean, were? To, to a degree, I mean, I'd argue this. That's a fair point, Tacoma. I, that, that's a good um, point. No, too. that's not a fair point. The red star is there to help Mata Nui lift off. That's why it's orbiting around I mean, Mata Nui. We, the other stars are, are, are we sure there. that Mata Nui is the only robot ever made? Like, we know there's two. Yeah, well, we, we, I mean, we, we know, know there's he two, was not. But... Are you saying that the great beings literally made a bunch of stars Maybe. just so on the off chance Maybe. that something crash landed back in Aqua Magna, they would I mean, arrange yeah, I'm assuming if they made multiple robots, and they also made multiple fail-safes for them, too. No, we only know there's two. Ro we know well, there's only uh, two robots. The great beings well, are pretty okay. amazing, so... We know that we know there's only right, two robots. Right, but we robots. also don't yeah. know anything yeah, about the stars, like so, like, if we're just going to say, like... that give signals or something. We know Solus Magna is just a star. All right, it, I got it. This is all a hypothetical point, so, like... Okay, all right, what's the answer, Alder? In regards to the prophecy, however, the prophecy was on the telescope, and the telescope was a part of the Matsunui robot. It was part of its function. So when it crash-landed, made Matsunui the island, and started shooting things up out of it, the Great Telescope was one of those things. It was designed intentionally to monitor the Red Star. Now keep in mind, the Toa and the Matoran, okay. so on and so forth, they didn't make any modification to it. So the prophecy okay. of the Toa Mata was on the telescope, separate from anyone looking at the stars. So it was like an illusion, almost. Wait, no. So it, it, it yes, could easily be that it's, the stars aren't actually there, but they show up in the telescope. Yeah, yeah. If you look through the telescope, you can see like stuff projection. you can no longer, you didn't see before. Wait, no, 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 no. That's, that's not no, what I'm that's saying. Not it. Oh. That's what? not how a telescope works what, at all. What, what? That's basically. Well, of course, it's not how an actual telescope that's, works. Well, I mean, that still opens up other questions, though, because like, why the heck is there a telescope here? Who, who were they expecting to actually look through this to monitor the red star? Well, uh, Gali Nuva apparently. She was supposed to leave the Mata Nui robot and go on top of Mata Nui's face and look through the telescope to monitor the red yeah. star. Really, that was her duty. That that happened. That happened in the story. When? Uh, I mean, mean yeah, it, it happens because we know, yeah, you know, we know that Mata Nui crashed. It was a freak accident. Yeah, like, that yeah. was an accident, though. Like, are you saying that this <laughs> is the actual it was purpose of the telescope? I'm not saying it was intentional. Just that it... it yeah, okay. but what and I'm she's, saying she's, is, why, like, why is this even a thing? Because, like, are, how, why does this exist? Because if Mata Nui hadn't crashed, what would be the purpose of this telescope? I... Quite honestly, could not tell you in a million what years. What would be the purpose in shooting the Toa Mata outside of the Mata Nui robot? That's okay, no, 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 no. Here's here's the thing. Mata Nui is supposed to function like this. The the thing crash lands. Okay, the Mata Nui robot is no longer mm -hmm. functioning. That's when the Toa gets sent yeah. out. All right. So we know that the Toa are only going to send out when Mata Nui's crash landed. So that makes sense. What doesn't make sense is that they put the telescope on the face of Mata Nui. Because if Mata Nui had landed face down, everyone's kind of right. screwed. It's like, you know? well, <laughs> what's to say that the island of Mata Nui wouldn't have just appeared on the backside of his head? Because the island is formed by all the energetic Actually, predators. Actually, no, that's another thing. That's the island it. is bullcrap. Like, how does how does this yeah, work? The island. Like, why, how does the island. island form over his face? Like, yeah, what what if he landed face down? And the idea is that energized predators leaked out and it formed like. All this terraforming stuff, and then it grew like on top of on it. On top of it. So, well, like, if any if any part exact. was okay, let's be fair. If the great beings can make a bunch of little robot dudes that can create stone and plants and stuff like this, what's to say they can't just put that sort of same system into well, Mata Nui's yeah, pores? Yeah, Mata, okay, no, Mata Nui is supposed to go so around like, and observe. So like really bad Mata Nui robot acne that creates an island on his face. All right, okay, uh, no, no, so no, okay, here's here's the here's that here's the thing. Mata Nui is supposed to observe other. Uh, other worlds. If Mata Nui ever crashes or crash lands at one of those worlds, a Toa are supposed to go out and, you know, fix him, basically, and get him up and running. Mata Nui does this observing thing by camouflaging into each world, and then he'll rock it up and move again. I don't know what they were really searching the worlds for. That's, uh, I that know. Ever explained? I, I know, yes, it was. You see, 
First of all, the camouflage system, in regards to the Andres Prodermis, the camouflage system, you're right, it was designed to conceal him on other worlds. The energized protodermis was a mistake. That wasn't supposed to happen. That doesn't come right, into right, play. Right. That what that's what created all the plants and stuff. Right. Matanui's purpose. Spherus Magna happened. The core war happened. Big war broke the planet to smithereens. Matanui's exact purpose was to go to other worlds, other planets, observe how they do things, take a bunch of findings, bring them back. Re uh, like put the planet back together, and then like try and implement those solutions on Spherus Magna so the Core War doesn't happen again. The ironic thing is, Matanui was in the process of returning to make the three planets whole again when Makuta struck and he crash landed. Okay. Right. See, I get all of that. What I don't get is the purpose of this telescope and how the constellations work. I don't because know, but... I get it. Alright, it's meant to monitor the red star. If Matanui's on a world that's far, far away, you have a different set of constellations to look at. Here, here's if he's my on a, assumption. If he's visiting this other world, you don't have the same constellations in the same, like, order that they appear in the sky. It, it, which, which, means lend, that, which would lend credence to the fact that they're not even stars at all. I mean, well, I, no, that's a stupid, that's a stupid <laughs> argument. <laughs> That's so stupid. It's Why better they... than nothing. <laughs> yeah. It's no the the correct thing is nothing <laughs> works. They didn't plan this through. That's the that's <laughs> what actually happened. Two, two they things. Did not yeah, plan of course, this. we all think that there is no actual answer. These are just hypotheticals that could fill. I in. know. I'm saying that I, the hypothetical is like it's so outrageous. And it's like no, no, no. You know, I mean, you might as well say, oh no, God just messed around with the universe so that Madanui's robot could you know could figure out what was going around. He was like, what happened? God was like, oh, whoops, Madanui. All right, let me let me put this stuff here. Now, they, now these guys know what's going on. That's exactly the same so, argument. Why would they make stars? Makes no sense. Two two things, Kai. Real fast. Oh, man. One in regards to the telescope. When I mentioned the telescope and brought up the whole prophecy thing, I didn't mean that the prophecy. You look through the telescope and hey, look, prophecy. It's on the base. What I said well, is that the isn't prophecy. Isn't that what happens in Minog? When the you look through, don't you see no, the constellations? No, 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 no. It's on the base of the telescope. It's inscribed on the base below the okay, functioning Okay, so, so lens. the prophecy itself isn't even a part of the telescope at all. It's just on the telescope. Wait, yes, the, that is you correct. Look the that is correct. Don't you yes. see constellations? Wait, what? The constellations. The constellations are irrelevant. They're, they just they were random. Yeah. Yeah, I know, yeah, no. but like. I, I remember going to Minog and looking through the telescope and you would see the constellations and then on the bottom of the telescope you would see like little inscriptions with the constellation like images and stuff of what was going to happen yeah that was on the base of the telescope that wasn't in the stars oh but, but, but what Kai is saying is that, that the, the base was like a translation of those constellations though yeah right. it's like it, that's, that's what they were true. seeing with the stars right Mm -hmm. As new updates for the first Monog were released, you could look through the telescope and the constellations would change. You could reference the base to get, like, this vague clue of what's going to happen next. Right. Yeah, yeah but story-wise, the inscriptions were the prophecy. Now, I personally don't believe that they were based off of the stars or whatnot. I personally believe that that was part of its design prior to the island of Matanui and the Matoran. So they just but, randomly put a prophecy there on the telescope? Yeah. I, like, what is the point of that, then? I don't know. Who, who, who did they expect telescope? to see that? <laughs> why did they just... Why did they just make... What, I mean, obviously, the best way to do it would be, like, maybe Kini Nui uh, okay, or somewhere. That, that, like, that's just the other thing. Oh, boy. They're, they're, uh, that was my other thing. I, I'd assume they'd have, like, some dude in there, because... Oh, that reminds me. The, the, uh, the Matt Nui robot, it had two pilots. It had two Glatorian pilots in the head of the Matoran universe. And there were people piloting them? Oh, yeah, oh, you guys don't know about this? Yeah. I forgot about this. Yo, you're right. Wait, I, I remember them being there. I don't remember them being pilots. I, yes, they were, they were, no, they were dead designed to be pilots. They were pilots. But when, yeah. yeah, but when the Matoran universe crashed, they died. Maybe they were uh, intended to look through the telescope. Okay. All that right. makes sense. Okay, that, like that makes sense. Like that a, makes a, um, I like get a submarine that. looks I can get through its like, little telescope. Yeah, see. exactly. That exactly. That well, that was the that other thing sense. I was going to say is that, like a that even if it was, even if it, well, nobody was intended to be on the surface to use the telescope, wild crackpot theory, what if it was Matanoi's pariahscope that he used to observe the other things he was observing? 
Why is it a telescope that's in the sky as opposed to, like, drones? Why is it the red star look up from up above down below to what's going on? Because that's a better vantage point. Well, then what's the point in building a Matanui robot to go down to the other There is no point a red in star a Matanui robot! Star robot. Let's robot. be honest! It's the stupidest solution! Oh, hey, how do we solve war? I don't know! Let's put a freaking giant robot and send it to other planets who figure out now to have a war! Are you kidding me, Miss Crap? Good grief. Okay. Hey, you could have been. All right, all right. No, I'm just, okay. Listen, guys. Right. Calm. There's a yeah. simple answer to this. G1 is best bionicle. Flawless. 10 out of 10. Nothing's wrong with it. G1 right. yep, best yep, I agree 100%. Uh, I can't. I, 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 I want to say this is a great episode, ball, but man. I believe the majority of this has been talking about G1 <laughs> stuff. Man. I just got so many new ideas for the RPG. Man, um, <laughs> my goodness. To, <laughs> to wrap this chapter <laughs> up and get it back to G2, uh, nothing mm. really happens. Uh, we, we move on to Tahu <laughs> and really Narmoto. They're like, okay, let's climb this mountain and get your mask. Yeah, and Tahu's really like, much. cool, I've got fire swords. And Narmoto is like, this is the tallest volcano on Okoto. And he kills some spiders and they climb the mountain. Normando jumps on his back. It's just like the animation. Really, nothing, yeah, nothing new happens in this chapter. Just, uh, this is basically straight up animation. So, yeah. And that's really the end of the chapter. Like, uh, nothing else really happens. Um, we got. It, it wasn't a very interesting chapter. It was a very exposition chapter. That's what it was. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah. So. <laughs> that is that. Uh, let's let's. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I just I love how much this yeah, derailed. Yeah, that I'm, was, sorry. What was that? <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we turned this into the Biotalk Book Club. Good call, Bar. Now it's like overall Bionic. Right, <laughs> whatever. I mean that the that book. is essentially what the original Biotalk was. So it what was. even started that debacle? What the uh, uh I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it I, don't, this, um, I, don't, I think Kai started or something. But regardless, we're course. gonna wrap this. No, no, it's a prophecy of the Toa. It was like, right. how much oh yeah, we never, we never answered that. By the way, that the prophecy. My I don't bad. think there's no, there's no answer to that question. There is no answer. I'll never ask a question like that again. <laughs> <laughs> it got some good discussion. I thought it was a good, good discussion. Let's critique. let's go ahead and wrap this up yeah. with our opinions on this chapter. Okay. So um, we'll start with LJ. What do you think of the chapter? All right. I mean, <clears throat> we already know all this stuff. So for us, it's just exposition. There's nothing new here. But I feel for a new reader, for someone that's new to the series, new to the book, hasn't seen much of the animations, doesn't know Bionicle, it's helpful. I'm glad the chapter's here. I'm glad it's early on. I'm glad we're getting it out of the way so we get to move on to better things. However, I am glad for what it does gets us well acquainted with the other protectors. The biggest question I had from this chapter is what the beans are the skull spiders made out of? Like, they get sliced up, beaten aside, thrown into chasms. Are they flesh? Are they blood? Chasms? Are they mechanical? Beans? Well, chasms. Did you say chasms? Why would you say what's the beans? Chasm. Like, it seems to be like if you're gonna use this, if you're gonna set this first word, basic, you they, they get thrown the places. Beans, right? Bad things happen like to them. Just the beans seems a little like but, uh, egregious in them. Kai, but I, I'm glad it's out of the way. You know, I'm glad we got to see Galley and Kapaka. Kapaka's kind of a goof. But, that's mean, you know, Alan. It's fine. Yeah. That's not nice. <laughs> He, he's well, a, he's Lee was goofy. Kind of a he's just idiot. goofy. Lee was dumb. Lee wasn't even in this chapter, okay, was no, he? he wasn't. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but fight, we know, I like, can confirm, Lee was an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I liked it, but yeah, it was pretty simple. All right, Kai? Um, here's, here would be my thing. If there is a plot twist coming on later in Bionicle Story that has to do with the two brothers fighting, okay? Uh, the, and like, there's some plot twist that ties into that, and it's a revelation later on in the year. Then okay, I'm fine with this chapter. If there isn't, then I'm not okay because I feel like you should always show and not tell. And I don't know if they're doing this thing why they didn't actually show us Ikimu versus Makuta from that perspective, as opposed to having people like other people tell us in that position later on. Now again, this is all assuming. I'm assuming that the, what we saw in the prologue is kind of what, you know, what they would, you know, it would be turned into prose. If there's some added thing, if there's, like, some thing we didn't know, and, then like, the reason why they're having other people tell us is that, so they're, they're building up to a, the huge revelation later on, that, oh, you know, M M Ikimu did something wrong, or Makuta was really trying to do something different, then I get that. I get why they're not showing that now. But from my perspective, you should always show and not tell when you can. And this is an example where they should have shown 
the expedition talk, I feel it's it's too having an entire chapter devoted to it, it's a little hard. But you know what? It's okay. I agree, but the point I mean, to be fair, it would have taken a lot more pages to show instead of telling and they probably don't have that in the budget or something. Yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> In the budget, page. I mean, I would also yeah, page count. Uh, the book is like. I mean, I he's mean, he's a, know, a freelance author, so they probably pay him per word count or something like that. I don't know. Word sure, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying that you could like that. you could re- replace this entire thing where they're talking about the history of Okoto to an actual thing between the. Kingdom I guess it's and fair, but also it would be nice to have a flashback. I guess yeah. also that does take place like right. so long ago. It might it might seem a little out of place if it was given in that way. Well, I mean, yeah, it wouldn't be in chapter two. It would be like a prologue before chapter fair enough, one. Yeah. That's, to be that's fair, I, I, I just don't want to find out about this important plot point and exposition unless they're building up to something. If they're building up to something, that's fine. But if you're not, then I would rather that be a prologue and show what happened. Don't tell me what happened through a character. Going off of what Var said, it could be possible that the reason they're doing it this way is because maybe they don't remember it, how it really happened. Yeah, I know. That's what, that's what I mean by setting up. Like, if it's supposed to set up something later in the story. It's. I mean, like, the specific point in the chapter where Golly says, tell me, Kavoda, did Makuta's spirit survive? Is he responsible for the rising evil? They, she says, yes, or so we believe. So, you know, yeah. we also believe... That she's specifically pointing out that they're... They're not really sure what More happened. or less making... Yeah, they're making an assumption. Right. I mean, listen, it all depends on how... This, I'm critiquing this from the early point of the story. We don't know how the story ends up three years down the road. We can come back and be like, oh, this could have been set up more. This couldn't have been set up more. From right now, I don't like exposition. So that's my, my perspective coming into it. But if you're right and they don't know everything that's going on and it's revealed later to something they're missing... Then this chapter was okay. It was, it was worth it. All right, fair enough. Vipper, what do you think about this chapter? Um, I mean, people have already brought up Vipper. a lot of stuff that I was going to say. Yes, so I I'm said not Vipper. Gonna... <laughs> yes. Fair, fair, fair enough. Uh, I'm, I'm basically, yeah, I'm basically like same a, way. So you know, it was a bit. It was it was an it was an all right chapter. It wasn't too interesting and. There was a lot of exposition. I just wish there was just more action. So um, it wasn't for action. So they and like Kahi said, I'm glad that they're pushing all this out of the way instead of just randomly cutting to just some you know random other exposition while fighting because it's off putting and weird. So yeah. All right, Takuma. Each set sold separately. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I've said this to you guys, but I haven't said it on any sort of recording, or maybe I did in the podcast. I, oh gosh, that'd be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> what, what'd you th- but um, just just from just from a writer's standpoint, I just didn't like a lot of things in this book. I'm not saying it's a bad book. I'm just saying there's a lot of things I would have done differently. And this specifically might be a chapter where I'd kind of just like want to rewrite it, it how I would write it, and see what people thought of a comparison between the two. I always think about it myself. Th- yeah, otherwise, my thoughts about the chapter itself are kind of what Kahi was saying. It's a whole lot of exposition. Good for people don't, who didn't watch the animations or don't know this already, but it's kind of boring, and it would have been nice to see stuff actually happening in flashbacks yeah. or something, unless there's a reason it's not being done. Yeah, and the word I would say for it, if you already watched the animations, is it's kind of skippable, honestly, this chapter. There's like nothing completely new about this. There's nothing to original be about fair, this. fair, there's a lot. A lot, of, a lot of the book could be skippable if you've already watched all the <laughs> yeah. animations. Yeah, that's very it's true. It's just, yeah. So, it's not one of the best chapters, and it is a bit boring. I remember reading it and being like, mm-hmm. Well, it's because mm-hmm. the dialogue, too. I can point about this, too. You can interchange any of the Toa. But, and the, again, the protector. It's, it's not And it's a basically me. the same it's, conversation. It's for a yeah. kid, and... You know, like... We don't, we don't, we're not seeing their personalities really shining through a whole lot yet. Right. Yeah, Either I them or the protectors. That. We don't see that. Okay. Anyhow. Um, as far as my opinion on this chapter, I thought it was okay. It is exposition heavy, but I actually liked the kind of the format it had, where it sort of switched between Toa. I thought that was a if they were yeah. that was if they were going to do this like chapter where it's going to be full of exposition, then I think that was the proper way to handle it. Um, with that said, I would have actually liked if this exposition was kind of spread out a bit more throughout the book instead of just going 
you know, it's page by page, one big yeah. info yeah, dump. Yeah, big info dump. Because I feel like, yeah, it, it really bogged down the chapter. And, like, the info was... It feels was, like an encyclopedia. The info was good. The info was, like, interesting. Like, we, we like, um, to come up mentioned Makuta, they, they're not really sure what happened to Makuta, but they're assuming Makuta is the one behind the attacks and everything. Like, that's pretty cool. That's interesting stuff. And I would have liked to have gotten a bit more of that. More of this stuff that we didn't really know prior. And more of the things, like, the protectors and, like, how they feel about everything and whether they truly believe the prophecies and all that stuff more of that would have been nice but spread out throughout the book like they start this discussion where they kind of introduce Okoto and the story but they get cut off by an attack or they get cut off by something and it's continued at like a chapter down from now bring up the points of the history where they're right. relevant to something currently being talked about or encountered. Yeah, that would be nice. But I I mean but I also see like the need to really get the Toa informed before they go out oh, and yeah. do things and it makes sense to go ahead and get the audience informed as well. So, I don't know. But I wish it was spread a little bit more. I think uh it's really bogged down by the fact that the book is so small and there wasn't a lot to the yeah, book. Yeah, it's so. a shame. There's like the pacing's probably going to be all over the place because I haven't fully read the book yet. But the pacing's probably going to be on and off mm. depending on if it's going to be an exposition chapter or if it's going to be an action chapter. So it's going to be really slow in some chapters, and then all of a sudden it just be like like that, and then yeah. it's got. Mm. Um, true. But yeah, with that said, I think that basically wraps up all of our thoughts on this chapter. Uh, it was a short, kind of a short chapter, to be honest. Oh, yeah, yeah, it I was think only so. a couple pages long. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> yeah. Um, short chapter for a short book. But um, thanks for watching this, and be sure to tune in next week when we go over chapter three. Um, hopefully this conversation was insightful to you to some degree because uh, <laughs> <To> some degree. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hopefully you're able to, to see us in our actual faces if you're subscribed to yeah, Vessel. Yeah, if, if you're subscribed to Vessel, you can see us on our faces. We did record this video format, so that's a cool thing. Um, it is free. I need a haircut. But it is early access too, so like if you are an early access subscriber, you can access it a week early. It's If you're watching episode one right now, I think, on YouTube, then episode two is already up on Vessel for for paid right. subscribers. Um, if not, wait a week. It'll be out. Video format on Vessel for free. If you're watching on YouTube, it's only audio format. So, right. that's a thing. But yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the show. And we will see you all next time on VAR. I'm LJ. I'm Kahi. I'm Vipa. I'm Takuma Nuva. Goodbye. Goodbye.